Hello, hello, and for any of you whom I don't know, my name's Jane Clark, and I'm the CEO and Managing Director of SIM, the Coalition for Innovative Media Measurement. And I'd just like to warmly welcome all of you to our fifth annual Cross-Platform Media Measurement and Data Summit. Now, as most of you know, I think I have a clicker here. Yeah, there we go. So as most of you know, um, SIM's mission is to foster innovation in cross-platform measurement and to bring more granular measurement to television, which covers two major transformations in media today. You know, as we all know, new devices and services for viewing media have fragmented consumer behavior across an ever-increasing number of devices, locations, and times of day and the growth of data for precisely segmenting audiences for advertising is forcing us to look at audience measurement in new ways. So most of you know that SIM is a coalition of the buyers and sellers of media. SIM member companies bring their thought leadership together to collaborate, to prepare RFPs, and to pilot test new measurement tools that meet the needs of the end users. So we champion industry initiatives that may require patience and multi-year efforts. We've got a big one of those I'll mention later. Um, we work together to drive change in media measurement. So I'd like to shout out a big thank you to all the SIM members who give their time and their talents to push forward important industry initiatives, many of which you'll hear about today. So now, most of you have seen this slide. Uh, you're probably getting tired of it by now, but um, SIM has been following this same roadmap for the last six years, basically, since our launch. Uh, we're supporting, developing, and testing solutions for planning, for buying, you know, for measuring unduplicated reach and frequency across media, for cross-media content and ad ratings. Um, and then evaluating the impact of cross-platform ad campaigns. And so this kind of fills out what we've done so far, the accomplishments in each of these areas. And so in the planning area, we conducted the pilot test for USA Touchpoint's cross-media planning tool uh, that originated in the UK, but is now launching in 20 countries under the direction of Reality Mine. Um, with Publicis Media, Starcom Media Vest, I think it's all Publicis Media now, as the charter client. Um, so in your packets, you'll also see an article from the Journal of Advertising Research derived from last year's SIM white paper on enriching media data, quality is key to ROI. So SIM is advocating a greater focus on data quality for this growing use of third-party data for media planning and impact measurement, and increasingly uh, as part of buying currency. So, you know, for exposure measurement, we've conducted a number of single source and hybrid panel and census pilot tests, um, including the most recent test of Comscore's cross media service before their acquisition of Rentrack. Um, and today, you'll hear about a new single source pilot test with Reality Mine and TiVo Research, which is really pushing the envelope on how many devices you can measure in a household in a single source panel. Um, you know, we have router meters, device meters, TV meters, check in apps for co viewing, you know, all for the purpose of measuring how kids and teens are watching video across all platforms which isn't captured accurately today in syndicated measurement. So in evaluating the impact of ad campaigns in the last um, bucket, you know, Sim's been advocating, we had our, uh, a, a single source pilot test with Symphony Advanced Media a few years ago, and then we've been advocating for more passive measurement at scale that links census-based measures of media exposure with purchasing data. And you'll hear more about that in the presentation from TiVo Research today. Um, and I'm very excited today to announce the launch of a new SIM white paper on cross-device and cross-channel identity linking. Uh, so Evan, are you, did I see Evan, is Evan here? There, way in the back there. Evan Neufeld, 
uh, is going to be the consultant with whom we'll work to help the industry better understand the strengths and weaknesses of all of the deterministic and probabilistic ways to create links between big data, which may or may not you know, ever be able to replace panels. So back to the exposure measurement, um, the project that we've been working on probably for the longest, but which is very close to coming to fruition, is we've been collaborating for a few years with the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers to create an open standard audio watermark, which will have entertainment ID registry, or IDER as we call it, standardized master metadata embedded into the content and then ad ID, the same standardized master metadata for ads embedded into the ads. And this watermark will be able to be detected in set-top boxes, in smart TVs, and also in metering types of devices that are outside of the TV. So I'm pleased to announce that we're very close to selecting the technology provider and it will just take a little bit more time to launch this standard, to write it and launch it. But now is the time to implement Ad ID and ITER within your organizations if you haven't already done so. This use of standardized names for video asset, assets, it sounds like a small step, um, but it will have great efficiencies in media sales workflows and in our ability to speed up the delivery of ratings for television. So Kip Welch, if you want to raise your hand, is here from ITER. If you want to, anyone wants to talk to him about how to um, uh, get involved with ITER. And uh, Harold, where's Harold? Harold Geller from Ad ID. So if you guys have any questions, you can find them during the break. Um, so before we dive into today's program, I just want to take a few minutes to um, emphasize Sim's thought leadership in defining the must-haves, as we're calling them, for cross-platform media measurement, you know, what we're starting to call our measurement manifesto. Um, now, these are goals and actions that, you know, we've been discussing to provide guidance to research vendors, to member companies, to the industry. You know, last year we had a list, we called them the eight criteria for cross-platform measurement. Um, but they're sort of continually evolving, so we've changed them a bit this year and kind of rebranded them as the measurement manifesto. Um, so the first goal, we have three goals and eight actions, I guess. So the first goal is for accurate representation of the cross-device universe at scale and with precision to enable the use of advanced advertising segments and to move beyond only using age and gender in media buying. Advertisers are driving this goal. Secondly, our supply chain needs to be more efficient and closer to real time. The use of standardized metadata for content and ad identification will go a long way in speeding up the delivery of the TV ratings. So the timing's comparable to digital. The third goal is for comparable metrics across platforms. You'll hear from the MRC today about their effort to standardize cross-platform ad measurement as viewable, duration-weighted impressions filtered for valid, in-target, non-fraudulent human traffic. So George will explain all that to us later. Um, and the proposed standard for uh, cross-platform video measurement as average minute audience, you know, bringing time into this across platforms. So these new standards will take a little time to be finalized and implemented, you know, primarily because we don't actually measure ads on TV today. Um, but I think that we can all see that, that this change is coming. So what do we need to do? So, you know, firstly, we really need to embrace competition. You know, we won't have the level of innovation that's required in this time of rapid technological and consumer change um, without competition. So I know it's often hard to come up with the, the budget for competition, but um, this is really critical. Um, second, work to make these MRC standards meet our needs and then support them. You know, third, embrace this movement to go beyond panels to census-like measurement for both television and digital media usage. 
since we've all seen that these single source samples are just too small to be the only measurement in, uh, in a cross-platform world, in a cross-platform audience-based buying world. Um, they're important sources for calibrating demographics and in understanding in-home, you know, cross-media behavior of individuals, but we can see that these panels are just not going to be enough. Next, if we can't get the return path data that we need from all the MVPDs to create nationally representative TV usage data, smart TV data is coming on board rapidly, and you'll see this from Samba TV today. Um, it may soon be able to replace or at least supplement the return path data that we do have. So we're getting to the point of having, uh, you know, much better samples. Uh, and they're not complete census measurement, but much better. Um, now, can we finally measure out of home TV usage in the ratings, you know? We can use Nielsen's PPM data, which they're testing. We have ACR apps on smartphones. We can even try to figure out how to attribute audience to set-top box or to smart TV data, although that is a bit challenging. But we have out-of-home census data for digital measurement, and TV measurement really needs to be comparable. So in this new world, some purchasing and media data sets are only available at the household level. Even with the best identity matching grids, it's not always possible to link individual users of media to their usage data at scale. Some advertisers are fine with the shift to household or back to household-based measurement, since it may be more targeted for their customers. So we need to have flexible measurement that can accommodate different needs. Now, I've already spoken about the need to implement standardized metadata, but suffice it to say that this won't just help to speed up audience measurement and make it more accurate and quicker, but it will also enable more accurate second screen interactivity and workflow efficiencies in the way that we traffic both ads and content. And lastly, as we work more with big data, we can't forget about data quality. We need to demand transparency, data integrity, as well as privacy compliant matching from our third party data providers and the companies that link individuals and devices across devices and from offline to online media. So, you know, all of these steps have been discussed by many of us generally, they're supported, but as with any set of ideals, they exist only in concept. You know, they can only become real tangible and have impact through consensus, support, and ongoing day-to-day -day advancement. So we welcome further input and perspective on what's outlined here. Um, there's a version of which is in your packets that was uh, featured in Ad Age this week. Um, but even more importantly, we look forward to working collectively as an industry with all parties to ensure that the future that we realize is one that we've planned. <laughs>